Hello guys, good morning and happy coffee. If this is the first time we've met, my name is Alex. I garden in Missouri, Southern Missouri, zone 6B slash 7A. We tend to err on the side of 7A in the summer and 6B in the winter. Today is Friday, July 5th and I still have neglected putting my strawberries into my green stock and I really need that to happen. Last night we got a really heavy rain overnight, which means that these green stalks are nice and moist, which should make it very easy for the strawberries to transition into there without being sad. So this morning, I thought I'd just talk to you guys a little bit about my trip and maybe overlay some footage from that while we put these strawberries in the green stock. So let's go do it. There's a little strawberry on here. They're doing their second round of flowers. That's adorable. So first thing I need to do is get all of the mulch off of here, which I've kind of let these mulch themselves. There's just a lot of dead leaves from the strawberries and from trees. And some grass clippings. I should have brought gloves, but I didn't. All right, that's a good bit. I think I'm just gonna try and dig it up and see what happens. Oh, well, the container broke. So sorry about that noise. I don't know what it is. It's a person driving a lawnmower down the street or some kind of equipment. I'm not sure what that is. all the dead leaves and any possible roots that need to go. Oh, this is definitely two separate plants at this point. There we go. Oh, I got dirt in my coffee. Why do I do this every time? Good as new. Maybe move it a little further away. So the most important part when you're dealing with strawberries is that you do not want to uh, bury the crown, which is here where it kind of looks like a hair tie is pulling the plant together. That is its natural crown and the leaves come up from the top and the roots come down from the bottom. I will not bury it deeper than right here. Anywhere that there is green should be above the ground. talk to you guys about Zion, but I'm not sure if you can hear me because of whatever the heck that is driving around. This one has a giant root system. That is, that's great. That should transplant just fine. Oh, you're about to see it. Whatever it is is about to come by on that street. That's what's driving around. Okay, I think you can kind of hear me now. So, my trip to Zion. We left here, my house, at 5 p.m. on the 
14th. And my love bug drove. We rented a car from Enterprise. It was a Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. My love bug drove literally the entire way. I did not drive one bit. Me and Love were the only ones who could drive. My mom wasn't on the rental insurance. So we left here at 5 p.m. and we drove to Springfield, Missouri, which is about two hours away. Um, and we had dinner in Springfield at a Chinese restaurant. <clears throat> and then we set out for Utah. Um, we didn't have any specific plans of sleeping along the way or not. We were just kind of dry. We were just going to kind of drive and see how it went. If we needed sleep or anything, we would stop. And in total, if you just drive straight through, which obviously you can't because you have to stop for gas and food and whatnot. If you just drive straight through, it's like 24 hours of a drive, just straight 24 hours of driving. So from Springfield, we went to Oklahoma City, and then through Tulsa, Oklahoma, or no, Tulsa first, then Oklahoma City is on the way. And that is a toll road, so we had to pay a few tolls from... Oklahoma City. We went all the way through Oklahoma into the top little square portion of Texas. Drove straight through Texas and this is about the point of the trip that I went to sleep. I literally traded seats with my mom. She sat in the front and I was like, all right, I'll see you guys on the other side of Texas. And it was like three in the morning, maybe four in the morning um, going through there when I went to sleep. And I wasn't joking because I literally woke up on the other side of Texas in New Mexico, maybe an hour and a half into New Mexico, I woke up. So then we went all through New Mexico, stopped for food, gas. I have a itemized list of the things that we spent that I can put on the screen or something, separate it for the trip there and the trip back for you guys. Through to New Mexico and then it, it was in, we were in New Mexico when the sun rose on the 15th. So, from New Mexico, we go to Arizona. The first town that we stopped in in Arizona was in Flagstaff, or maybe just outside of Flagstaff. At this point, we had been in the car a little over 30 hours, and my love bug had been driving the entire time. I offered to drive. He said he was fine. It, he likes, he prefers to be the one driving in the car, in any car, really. Um, so he didn't necessarily need me to drive. He just kind of did it all the way through. He made it easy for everybody. Um, but he, we could tell that he was starting to get pretty tired. And we didn't have to meet everyone at Zion Park until the 17th at 2 p.m. So we had plenty of extra time. So from Flagstaff, we went to the Grand Canyon. Um, we went ahead and used... <clears throat> Uh, entry point at the Grand Canyon to go ahead and buy our park pass which covers the uh, I think it's all the national parks is the one that we bought it's called like the America the Beautiful Pass it was $80 and then we all or we all I mean me my mom and my love bug went and looked at the Grand Canyon for about I don't know hour and a half maybe two hours um, <clears throat> it was pretty cool I have a lot of pictures of that I am from California. I was raised in California until I was 11 years old. And one of those years, while I was young, we actually tried to move to Arizona, to the Phoenix area. And that didn't last long, only about two months. But even within those two months and the rest of the time of my life over there on the West Coast, I had never seen the Grand Canyon. So it was actually my first time there. Um, it was Lovebug's first time at the South Rim. He had already been to the North Rim before. And it was also my mom's first time there. So we took a little walk around the South Rim and went inside their little geology center that had some really cool maps and stuff in there. I really love maps. I love maps a lot. So that was fun. But we didn't want to spend too much time because we had an entire week ahead of us of doing things exactly like that. 
Uh, so we we're only there for about two hours and it is difficult. I don't know if you guys have ever done it, but it is difficult to drive ar around the Grand Canyon. It is so big and vast that it takes hours, and I mean actual, literal hours, to drive around it. So it took us about three hours to get from the south uh, rim of the Grand Canyon to Page, Arizona, where we got a hotel room for the night because both my mom and I were like, man, th this man should not be just driving through and then sleeping in a car. That's terrible. He needs a bed. <laughs> so we rented a hotel room. I think it was $125 for the night. Uh, so not the fanciest hotel, but not the worst one I've ever been in. It was clean. Damn it, I got dirt in my coffee again. Oh yeah, these strawberries were in some used up soil. Poor guys. I don't know what that guy is doing, but I wish it was quieter. This doesn't really add to an aesthetic morning in the garden, you know what I'm saying? I think this plant is technically two. I think those are two separate crowns, but I'm not going to separate them because they're like small enough and have enough of a root system that I'll throw it in just like this. So from the Grand Canyon, we went and stayed in Age, Arizona. We went ahead and got a hotel room for the night so my love bug could get some actual rest, not like in the car, pretend sleep. Then in the morning, we left Page at around 11 and started on the way to Zion. Now between Page, Arizona and Zion National Park, there are a lot of national monuments. There's like the Grand Staircase National Monument, which is like a whole area that has a bunch of big rock formations and stuff. And so we just took our time because we had the availability of time and stopped at quite a few places along the way, including just some, a lot of them I don't even know the names of, but one of them was called like the Toadstools or something. Um, so we stopped there and did like a little hike. I walked through a little water basin next to some really, really big mountains and we climbed up in a little cave. And that was pretty cool. So we went to as many of those stops as we wanted to on the way. And then one of the places we ended up stopping for gas and just to look around. Oh, and we got Mexican food there. Oh, I broke it. That's sad. That's okay, though. One of the places we stopped in was Kanab, Utah. Um, both my mom and my love bug's names start with K. So we found this K on the side of a hill, and they got out of the car and pointed at it, and I took a picture of them. So we had a little bit of a time, and we actually drove around almost every single street in Kanab because it was just a really cute little town and we wanted to see what it was all about. So that town was adorable. We ate Mexican food and I don't remember the full name. I'll put it up on the screen. I took a picture of it. I don't think we had any major stops after Kanab, aside from the monuments that I said we stopped at just like periodically as we found them. But I think Kanab was the last like town that we stopped in and had food and everything like that. And we pushed on to meet my family my mom's family, my family, same thing, at Zion. We entered through the south end? No, we entered, yeah, I think the south entrance. We went through, basically there's this, there's one entrance that has a system of tunnels that you have to go through in order to get in there because the park is like surrounded by giant rocks and stuff. So we went in through the tunnel and I took a lot of pictures. In fact, I took a video of the entirety of the downward drive into Zion Canyon. And I think I'm going to, I'll put a little snippet of it here, but I think I'm going to 
um, put that as its own video in like real time in case people want to watch it with very minimal editing because it is beautiful it is gorgeous there I also took a video <gasps> on an e-bike I mounted my phone to my chest and just videoed while I was riding an e-bike this one's done yay I'm gonna put this one back on top of the green stock on to the next um, I don't think this will live there are no roots on it I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice that sadly bye also I'm done with this container Okay guys, well, I did not finish those strawberries, but it is 8.45 and I have to leave my house at 9, so I'm going to take the next 15 minutes to get drinks and food and my pets and everything ready for me to go to work today. I will see you guys either tonight or tomorrow morning to get these strawberries finished and to finish showing you guys what happened at Zion. I'm actually going to plant one more strawberry because it's already out of the soil and needs planted. Other than that, I'll see you guys later. Hello everybody, welcome back to my garden for the second morning in a row. Let me get these green stalks down. Okay, so it is the next day. I really need to get these strawberries planted out and I also need to finish talking to you guys about my Zion trip. So, I believe we left off uh, taking pictures in Canab. <laughs> Getting closer to Zion, it started to be gorgeous. These rocks, I mean, I don't even want to call them rocks because they look so much better than just rocks, but these red sandstone cliffs is what they are, start just appearing out of nowhere. And they are so gorgeous. And the way we start, we got there kind of in the evening time, so the way that the sun was hitting them was just amazing. Um, and we were actually staying inside the park. I didn't know that, but we got to um, Springdale, which is the little town just outside of Zion National Park at, on the south end in Utah. So we got to Springdale um, around 3 p.m., I think, and we met up with my grandfather and he took us to the cabins. And the cabins are a walking distance from the Court of the Patriarchs, which is one of the most famous places in the entire Zion National Park. Um, and there's a giant cliff that I have tons of pictures of because it was right outside our cabin. So I got to see it in the morning, in the evening, fully at nighttime, covered in stars, just like it was right there. We were inside the park in our cabin, so every time we went outside, it was just like, oh. So this family that we went on the trip with is my mom's side of the family that she hasn't seen in 10 plus years, most of them. Uh, so she was really, really excited. It was really awesome for me to be able to see my mom in that kind of state of mind. She doesn't get to do a lot of special things. <clears throat> for herself. So the first night we were there was kind of just everybody hanging out, kind of meeting everybody, um, figuring out the cabin situation, and then we all <clears throat> took lawn chairs and sat them around this tree that just so happened to be kind of in the middle area of where everyone's cabins were, and that kind of became our meeting tree for uh, we would meet there in the morning uh, to meet up and go on hikes. We would meet there in the evening to have drinks and see each other at nighttime before bed. And it was really cool. Weirdly, one of my cousins looks just like, acts just like, sounds just like a friend that we have here in Missouri. So that was kind of strange. It was almost like we took one of our friends with us. 
So the first full day in the park, we all got up and went to breakfast together. And then we drove to Bryce Canyon, which is about a three hour drive from Zion. And I didn't think it was gonna be as cool as it was, but it was actually really, really cool. The perspective view from there is just amazing. Uh, so we walked around Bryce for a while, and, but we had dinner reservations at a town or at a restaurant in Springdale, so we didn't have a terribly long time to spend at Bryce. But it was really cool. They have um, so inside the canyon, they have just a path where you can go down into it, and they even have overnight tours where you can go camp inside the canyon and it is really really cool obviously we didn't do that we didn't have time i need another container of strawberries Oh, it was kind of hard for me to move. Oh, I forgot to say, the first night we were there, we had dinner at a pasta and pizza place. And then after Bryce Canyon, on the second day, we had dinner at a Thai restaurant, maybe? I can't fully remember the order in which we ate at places because there were so many places that we ate at. <laughs> after that, we all just kind of chilled out together, had dinner, and then came back and had some drinks. On day three, we got up in the morning, we did the Emerald Pools trail hike. What is up, dudes? We are going to hike the Emerald Pools today. Emerald Pools. I don't know why I'm struggling to speak. I, uh, we just parked over there in the parking lot. <clears throat> I was just coming over here to look at this map. Morning, steep cliffs. Lower, middle, upper. Upper distance round trip is 2.1 miles. We can go ahead and do the Hyanata Trail for more than that if we wanted. Let me turn you around. So we're staying here. Well, we're staying here at the Zion Lodge, but we are standing right here currently. So I guess we need to go across this little bridge and to the trail. And this is the upper emerald, emerald pool, so we'll start here, all the way around, up to here, back down to over here. Which was a lot harder than I thought it would be, and it was very steep incline, straight uphill basically. Um, me, my mom, and my love bug didn't go all the way because I am not an avid hiker, I mean I am, I really like it, but the hikes around here that I do often are like trails. They're not really hikes. <laughs> so I am out of shape. The only shape I've ever been in is round. Um, so, so that was a pretty difficult hike, but we went to the middle pool and then just hiked back down the same direction rather than going to the lower pools or the upper pool because the upper pool was pretty far up an incline and the lower pool was pretty far down some stairs and my mom has some knee issues and has trouble going downstairs so we all just decided we're gonna turn back at this point and the other people that were with us went up to the upper pool after the emerald pools hike we went horseback riding we each paid i think sixty dollars per person for a one hour horse ride two workers came with us rode us up near Court of the Patriarchs and I got some really good pictures. My horse was a little bit lazy and had to trot quite a few times to catch up with everybody else, but that was kind of fun anyway. Standing there and all scoping out the horses and I was like, "Ooh, I really love that one. That one's so pretty. Who gets seated on that one? My mother. Okay, after the Emerald Pools, this was the big day. We did the Narrows. Now, most of the people in our party weren't confident that they could do the Narrows. I wasn't confident that I could do them, but I knew I was gonna try. The Narrows out in, is an out and back hike 
for a total of 18 miles, four miles of which is technically the river walk that leads you to the Narrows. So we did two miles of the river walk, then walked probably eight miles up the Narrows, including one little like, like if this is the regular canyon you're supposed to go in, there's like a little off canyon over here. And we went all the way down that, came back, and then went a little further. So a total of probably nine miles, or no, a total of probably eight miles out the Narrows and back, and then two miles of the river walk, making that four miles. So we walked, or hiked, up a river, over rocks, through holes, in the water. So at the deepest points, the water was up to here on me, and it was flowing the opposite direction you were walking, so it's really hard to walk up the water. Um, a total of around 18 miles, which is the total of the Narrows. We didn't go to the end of the Narrows <clears throat> because there was a point where we came to a turn and there was a couple who was coming the opposite direction and we asked them if it was terribly difficult and they said it was the hardest part of the hike, that the water was up to their chest and shoulders because one was a man, one was a woman, so one shorter, one taller. So the woman had the water up to her shoulders and it was still flowing towards you. So I, at that point, didn't think that I had enough energy in me to keep going. In fact, I didn't bring any snacks on this hike at all. I knew it was going to be hours long and I was ill prepared. I just, I didn't think that everyone was going to be up and ready at the time that they were and people weren't 100% communicating very effectively. So I just, uh, I just went on it and didn't bring any food. I did bring water. We had drinks. It was me, my aunt, um, my second cousin, and my love bug are the only people of all 14 of us that went. There was only four of us. And my aunt, who's in her 50s, mind you, was also getting tired. <laughs> so that's why we decided to turn back. And we all feel like we did enough of it that we did the hike. Like, none of us feel like, oh, we should have gone further. We didn't do it. We didn't actually finish. Like, we all feel like we wrecked ourselves. My love bug is in very good shape. He used to be in the military, and that kind of thing just never really leaves your body. So he's basically prepped and ready for any physical activity ever, and I am almost not ever ready for physical activity ever. So he did great. He helped me and my aunt at the end when we were struggling to walk. Um, we did rent uh, boots, socks, and walking sticks from a place in Springdale. And I will say, I highly recommend that if you do the Narrows hike, you need, like, don't, don't buy their shoes, that's fine. Bring a walking stick. You need a walking stick. I would have fallen countless times if I didn't have a walking stick. And there were old people out there, young people out there, like babies in carriers on their parents' backs. Some of them did not have walking sticks, and I was so afraid for those children. Please, for the love of God, if you go on that hike, bring a walking stick. It will make it or break it for you. Um, on the way out of the Narrows, I started to feel sick. I looked at Lovebug and I said, babe, I feel like I'm going to throw up. And he's like, oh no. He's like, you need to sit down? I was like, no, I think if I sit down, I will throw up. So we kept going, but I was feeling sick and hot and every time we turned a corner and got back into the sunshine because in those canyons um, some spaces are completely shaded because of where the sun is uh, versus some being completely sunny and we turned a corner into a sunny section and I was just I gagged I was like I am gonna throw up and I sat down and it was like dry heaving, like like when you can't control the gags and they're just coming and coming and your stomach is just wrenching and wrenching. It was like that. But as I said, I don't do a lot of strenuous physical activity like that. So basically what I'm saying is I got heat exhaustion while on that hike and ended up throwing up. So the last two miles was really, really slow going. 
mostly due to me, but I could tell that my aunt was happy about it because she was tired too. Um, we got, we probably took six breaks in the last two miles leading up to the river walk. And once we got to the river walk, I sat down on this little stone, uh, like path break that they have, like siding for the path. And I projectile vomited straight water two inches from my cousin's shoe. I felt so bad. I felt like I had ruined everyone's hike and that I almost threw up on him. Like that couldn't even be worse than that. It, it was not great. But uh, it was fun anyway. And it was... I knew that there was a potential for me to be sick. In fact, the, the previous day, I was feeling not so great after the Emerald Pools hike. So I just kind of knew it was going to happen like that and was trying to go with the flow. So we got back from that hike and I got in the shower and stayed in the shower for quite a while just to try and cool down and re-regulate my body temperature and whatnot. There's a, there's a shuttle set up at Zion because certain areas you're not allowed to drive your own car, you have to get picked up by a shuttle. So when we finished the Narrows and got to the place where the shuttle is supposed to pick you up, there was a line of at least 400 people. And every time a bus came up, only 20 to 25 people got on that bus. It's not like in Europe where you smush together and it doesn't matter if you're touching people. In America, they don't want you too close to each other and the people don't want to be too close to you. People will straight up get in fights because there are other people too close to them. And I was quite literally incapable of standing for that amount of time without just being sick. I was not in a good way, still very nauseous, very lightheaded, uh, couldn't walk too terribly far. And somehow there was this one vehicle up at, there is a parking lot up there because I think uh, handicapped people are allowed to drive up there as well as during the off season when it's not so busy just regular cars are allowed to go up there but there was just one single car in the parking lot and while i me and my love bug were just sitting there seeing if the bus line went down any um three people came out and started getting into that car and i just felt so bad that my love bug was unwilling to not try something so, he took a hundred dollars, a one hundred dollar bill, and went up to this, like, tour bus. It's like a tour... Like one of those open-sided buses. It's kind of like a wagon or a train. Um, but it was a tour. And they were stopping at, like, every stop along the way to the Narrows. Or along the way back from the Narrows. And my love bug offered that guy a hundred dollars to just take me down to our cabins, which were a few miles away. And he said no. <laughs> of course, obviously. Um, but then my love bug went up to those people in the vehicle. And he explained, you know, um, my, my woman, she just, she overexerted herself and she got too hot. And we think she has heat exhaustion. She's just not feeling so good. Um, and he offered them $100 and asked if there was a way that they could take me down to our cabin, which, like I said, was a few miles away. And they refused any money. And he just asked if they could take me. And they were like, what about you? And he was like, I'm just worried about my girl, really. I can take the bus. I'll do whatever I gotta do. Just can you take her? And they were like, no, no. And they made room in their car to take us down there. And my love bug had hiked a three foot long log basically out of the narrows because I really liked it and wanted to put it in my snake tank and they were like I don't know if we have room for that so he threw it a love bug threw the log into the bushes up in that parking lot next to the riverwalk entrance and the the three they were actually three Indian people from Kansas City uh, Indian like Hindu Indian, not like Native American Indian. Um, and 
they gave us a ride down there. They gave me cold bottles of water. They gave me a paper bag in case I was feeling sick. They offered me fruit snacks and they wouldn't take any money. So that was a thing. They were really, really nice. We ended up leaving some money in their car, like without telling them, like just leaving it there as we left because they were so, so nice and helpful. I don't know what I would have done without them. Um, but then we did break the rules a little bit and when I was feeling better after my shower and such we drove our our car up there that we weren't supposed to be driving up there and we got the log <laughs> I was like I was real sad that we had to leave the log behind even though I was sickly uh, so we went and got it my love bug was like oh no we're not leaving that we just couldn't fit in their vehicle so <laughs> we went and got the log um, I will show you guys that log Soonish, probably. It's inside my house right now. Okay, so we were going to do Angel's Landing, which is the really dangerous, really tall, super cool hike in Zion that you have to have a permit to do. And we even had some of the permits ready, but if we did the hike, we would have been required to do it on the same day that we did the Narrows. And Angel's Landing isn't a terribly long hike, but the Narrows is a terribly long hike, and it was almost dark by the time we got back, so we just decided it was best if we didn't try to do the other one, especially considering I had just been sick and throwing up from doing the Narrows. So the last few days in Zion, um, we actually had a couple family members who live in Arizona show up at the National Park. So we did a few things with them, went on a small hike, they had a five-year-old with, with them. So we just went on a small little like walk next to the little river. Hey guys, editing Alex here from work. Um, I realized that I totally forgot to tell you about one of the major things that we did while at Zion. So I just thought I'd pop in here and let you know and maybe overlay some video of it is that the day after we went to the Narrows on the same day that my family came in from Arizona, we rented e-bikes for eight hours all day, basically, and we rode the e-bikes all through the Paros Trail and all through the whole town of Springdale. And I didn't record the town of Springdale, but I recorded the entirety of the bike ride from my cabin. Um, down the street to the Parus Trail entrance and all through the Parus Trail until we exited Zion National Park. So that full length video is about 26 minutes I think and I will just barely edit it. I'll just edit out um, the video of just like me and my family talking while like sitting on the side of the road and I'll make it just a continuous video of just the trail um, or the bike ride itself and I'm gonna upload that as a separate video of just uh, the bike ride and it's actually on a chest mount so I had this like harness strap thing that went over my chest like this and my phone sat right here and I didn't think that the I didn't think that the video would be very stable but it actually really was the times that I put my hand onto my phone to try and stabilize it are the exact times that the video was unstable so most of it is really really stable and pretty and the clouds look ridiculous and fake honestly like it looks like an AI generated video but I promise it's not I took it on my own phone um, also that it looks really good for just a phone um, so yeah so sorry that I forgot to mention those and back to the video and we all went out to eat dinner together almost every night we all had breakfast together almost every day Friday my mom's twin brother left uh, she cried he also cried. Love you guys, though. 
on Saturday we all had breakfast together and then packed up and everybody had to get on out of there. Some people went back to San Diego, some people went to Vegas, some people went to California, some people went to Washington. We came back to Missouri and some people went to Florida. That's just where everybody lives. Everybody lives all scattered out and we kind of zoned in together on Zion. So on the drive back, we went the opposite way as the drive there. So on the way there, we went through Missouri, Oklahoma, um, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and then into Utah. On the way back, we went from Zion up towards the top of Utah to Moab, through Colorado, through a little bit of Kansas, through some of Oklahoma, and then back into Missouri and down here. So we went one way like this, and then back like this. <laughs> Like I said, I have a tally of how much money we spent on gas and food and little items on just literally the road trip as well as on uh, the trip to Zion. So somewhere overlaid in this video, you will be able to see what kind of price we were looking at. But that's basically all I have to say about that. Unless you guys have any questions, go ahead and let me know if you do. But we got the strawberries done. So here is the green stock now filled with, well not filled with, the bottom two layers are empty and then the top three are, these top three are filled with strawberries and one has a nasturtium in it. So I still have 12 container pockets down at the bottom to put other things in there and that'll be cool. Also looking over just right here, I've got a Richmond green apple cucumber. I'm not sure which kind of cucumber this is. Muncher cucumber. Um, we've got up here, we've got a big one right here that I will probably pick tonight. Got some Thorburn's terracotta ripening, Brad's atomic grape ripening. So a lot of things are happening in the garden and I'm so glad that I got to bring you guys along with me. I've been trying to think of what I was going to talk to you guys about while I planted these strawberries and it looks like life had it figured out for me. Alright guys, I have to leave my house here in about 10-15 minutes to head to see my love bug before I go to work. So I am going to head inside, make myself a cup of coffee, and then skedaddle on out of here. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and getting some insight on my trip to Zion. Thank you so much for coming along with me to plant these strawberries. Oh, also, um, Greenstock is having a really big sale right now. It's their 10th anniversary birthday sale, so a lot of things are a good percentage off. I think the Greenstock Tower that's usually $260 is $140 right now. Uh, so the one that's usually $160 I think is less than $100. So if you guys want in on Greenstock right here, definitely go and see them um, before the 11th. I think the sale ends on the 11th. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I love seeing you here, and I love the fact that you take the time to actually watch these videos and care about what I have to say. So thank you guys so much, and I'll see you all in the next one.